Game number one, everybody! The grand final! Granite Gaming against Washed Up. We are good to go and we have Dragonshire as our map. It's kind of the match that we expected, at least heading into the tournament. This more or less reflects all the qualifiers that we've seen so far, or most of the qualifiers leading to this event, because now we have Granite Gaming going up against Washed Up. But I gotta admit, the path that especially Washed Up took towards the Grand Final is not what I expected at all. They definitely showed a little bit of weakness here, but them losing to uh, Team Cheese is kind of something that is definitely forgivable if you consider how difficult it was for Granite Gaming to take Team Cheese down in the Winner Bracket Final. So this could be a very, very different Grand Final. Team Cheese was so close, so close to make the Winner Bracket run into the Grand Final. But they got eliminated, were taken down by Washed Up then afterwards, and now we're in Dragonshire, our first map. We have the ban against Vala, a little bit of a target ban against Chris, Hazo Obsess, Rek'Sai is also again taken out, since Dragonshire is a fantastic map for the hero. And as I said before, what happens when Granite Gaming plays? Exactly, Zeratul gets banned and usually Tracer with him. Full on target bans against Ty. Yeah, the UK player gets banned out over and over and over and over again. And for good reason. Every time you see him with one of the two heroes, he has a huge impact in the game. Doesn't guarantee the win, but damn, he is bringing the pain usually. So with the setup, we have ETC now picked right away. Ooh, it is Chen time. Ah, the panda's in. Again, not banned out, immediately picked. Fury takes him. The white Warmaster Chen skin. Definitely one of the best. Swam Garata with Jaina. And now that we have Nick on ETC, let's see what else we're going to get from him. I mean, again, you could also pin up ETC towards the top lane, but I kind of doubt that a little bit, considering that Chen is also up against them. Urel is a possible pick, and Leoric, of course, too, since Chris has already played Leo in the setup a uh, lot. When it comes to the damage output, we have once again uh, the boy with a bow, Hanzo, comes in. And that little toupee that he's rocking with this skin, plus Rega. It's time for the wolf. Talking wolves might see the second wolf in as well. Obviously, there's a chance that Greymane is going to make it into this one. And, yeah. Gimme, gimme, gimme. What are the bans? What are you banning out right now? Are you going to get rid of Leoric? Yes, you are. Leo gets taken out. Still the chance that we're going to see Urel, obviously. And, well, on the other side now, what do you ban out against Gunner Gaming? You can ban the support. Henning, usually a big fan of Taranda. She is still up. Could ban out here. Obviously, Malfurion would then be the traditional follow-up if Turanda is not available. I mean, the two of them are still top supports, I'd say. Depending a bit on the map. Rhaegar, for example, here making the priority. Ah, not too bad. I mean, again, Abathur can be played here too. Normally, when Granite Gaming plays Abathur, it is with the Zeratul setup. Or at least the attempt to head into that. But with Chen, it's still a problem. Chen with a level 10 jumping in with a triple panda, that always is annoying. If you have an Abathur to boot, then yeah, you know you're in trouble. But there's Toranda, as expected, Henning, boom, locking her down, not getting her in the early rotation, so therefore losing the hero slightly after that. Johanna coming in as well. And well, let's see what we have for Washed Up to finish out the draft here. What is Chris gonna play? We've seen him on a Blaze, we've seen him on Urel. Have you seen him on Ural? I think we did. So both of them would definitely be good here. Ural has an easier time jumping between the objective and the lane, but Blaze can offer the sustainability later on. Oh, Stitches! Okay, so they put ETC onto the top lane. I talked about it early, but I didn't expect it to actually happen. And we have Kel'Thas, so there's going to be a little bit of a switcheroo that we have in the swap round. But what's the last pick now for Ty? can play a mage, has played a lot of the auto attackers too, since they already have Jaina, a mage is kinda, would be unusual here. We've seen him on Phoenix recently as well, that could be one of the picks here. And it's Ophia, they go into the double mage, Coffin Girl makes an appearance in game number one. Alright, I'm set. Guys, let's go into the first game, Granite Gaming, against Washed Up in the grand final of the Heroes Hype Premier Series. 
Game is live, and we have again a bit of a switch, watch, a, little, a little bit of a switcheroo going on for Washed Up. We're gonna go over that in just a moment. For now, we have on the left side Turanda played by Henning, Swamp Grotta on Jaina, Fury playing Chen, and Tai on Coffin Girl playing Ophia here with Lauber on Johanna. And now things become interesting when we're looking towards Washed Up. Actually, the pause that we have in the game right now comes at a great time because we can talk about this a little bit. People that look at the setup are probably slightly confused, thinking like, what exactly is going on? So Mena has found his love for Stitches recently, has played that at the Masters Clash Finals and also in this tournament already once, and is actually doing a really good job on Stitches. So traditionally, you would expect him to play the mage. Hazo Ops obviously capable of playing Kalthas as well. But since Mane is like the OG Kalthas, he's usually the one to jump onto the hero. But in this setup, it's a little bit different. So they're going to look for a hook and then the gravity laps from Kalthas. We still have Chris on Hanzo. Banana H on Rhaegar, and now that Nick doesn't have to play the main tank because Mena is taking over, we have him on the offlane with ETC. So a little bit of a switch, but that's also one of the lineups where it comes in very, very handy that they have a very flexible lineup with players that have played all of these roles in the past already. So it's actually a pretty cool change from the norm. And will also make it a little bit more difficult maybe for Granite Gaming to anticipate what's being done here. But we have our little 4 versus 5 in the middle of the map. Jaina the only one that snuck down to the bottom. And it's also pretty cool to see that double, that double mage now for Granite Gaming. I talked about this in uh, the loser's bracket final a little bit. Double mage is normally not what you want to play. Every now and then in the blue moon you see a double mage. So it's not completely out of the question. But you're very dependent on burst damage and also cooldowns if you're playing with a double mage. And if your initial play gets denied, then you have a tough time waiting for your main abilities to come online again and go for the combo once more. So normally you have the pairing with a mage plus a direct damage dealer through auto attacks. Phoenix, Reyna, uh, Tracer oftentimes. I mean, there's so many examples of what could happen there, of course. But in this setup, they're actually trying the double mage out. Once every 500 to 1,000 games, I would say, you see a double mage coming through. Question, of course, then again, the first one is, is that still going to be successful? Chris! Damn, son! The Juke Master! Look at him! That could have been a kill there, and he juked out everything. Nicely done. So, yeah, the question is, is the double mage going to be successful? Are they able to play around with that? And, well, this game is going to give us the answer. But it's definitely not the traditional setup. It's not unheard of, but it's very, very, very rare. And oftentimes finds a rough time of getting the kills in. But yeah, so with this, let's see what else we're going to get here. We have currently Nick against Fury at this point. We're having down to the bottom of the map the uh, setup with Mena and uh, Chris. Uh, Siege Giants obviously coming through now as well to help out, and they're taken on both sides. So Granite Gaming is firing back with the same thing. Mena looking immediately for a quick hook. And the dangerous part really comes for the blue team when main is together with Kel'Thas because the gravity lapse follow-up is the traditional way how you would react for that combo. Also in terms of talents, we have actually the Eternal Retaliation now taken from Johanna, which means that she doesn't go into the speed adjustment on the Condemned to engage and disengage. Ooh, Kel'Thas actually taken down. Ah, good old Sazu dying there. But yeah, so not the speed adjustment for Johanna with the Condemn, but instead they're looking to see if they can get the extra wave clear through the cooldown reduction. And Mane might fall here as well, and that's the kill. Coffin Girl comes in, and Stitches is down. And that's two kills against zero for Granite Gaming already. Nicely played. Good job by them. Arcane Intellect, by the way, on level 4. So on level 1, we had the Winter's Reach taken, the additional range. So instead of having the Pierce... Uh, therefore, the Arcane Intellect to have at least some mana management. And this is going to be an interesting game, especially since we have Granite Gaming with a lot of aggression in this best of five. So, uh, in the mid lane, already Nick sitting tight here, trying to prevent the worst, aka the Dragonite. But up towards the top, Fury is currently, with the help of Ty, moving back 
Ty is holding on to the lane. The four men at the bottom of the map has reclaimed at least one shrine. And Rhaegar, thanks to the wave flick, can now go in for this as well. This is one of the big advantages of Rhaegar that with the lightning shield he has an easier time getting those camps. Now obviously in theory it's possible for any character out there to get those camps. The question is just always what is the time frame in which you can take one of them. And Rhaegar is one of the few supports that is able to get a camp all on his own in a reasonable time frame thanks to the lightning shield. Now it's obviously always better when you can send another hero in to help him out and speed that process up a little bit. But one of the reasons why we see Rhaegar in some of these games is that they are very mercenary camp heavy and Rhaegar can help out to uh, just speed up that process and help you to get the advantage of that. So there's a big push coming at the top right now. There's three man rotation already to try and defend against it. And at the bottom of the map a very similar picture but with the help of Svamgrotta that one has already been defended against. Tai again using the mobility here. He has been playing Coffin Girl for quite some time now and has always found a lot of success with her. But it's a heavily fought Dragon Knight, the number one DK. We're currently having Stitches, still on level seven with a Tenderizer. Uh, I wanna have your meat as tender as possible. And up towards the top, uh, Fury and Nick. I honestly wait for the day when we have a Chef Stitches in play in a team composition with the Butcher. Because the Butcher, he wants his meat tender and delivered straight up and Stitches can definitely do that deliver the meat straight into his hands the problem is in this game Stitches can't really do a, a whole lot because he is getting attacked heavily that's another four versus two uh, Stitches force all that he wanted to have is a little bit of playtime and now he gets taken out here a bit too much playtime for him so Granite Gaming is not impressed with that little roll swap They've been looking at these games and they've been saying like, hey, guys, if Mena wants to play a little bit of Stitches, let him play Stitches. But if you think that we are believing in the myth that he is just killing it on the hero and will dismantle us here, then you have another one coming for you because we are going to take him down. And that's exactly what they're doing. Three kills against zero. Granite Gaming looking strong. And just to give you guys a little bit of history, the same matchup that we're seeing right now has been played out in the uh, grand final of the last three qualifiers for this tournament, for the playoffs here. And in every single one of these playoff uh, grand finals, we have seen Granite Game against Wash Up, and Wash Up won every single one of them, of the last three. They won all the last three, and at some point, Granite Gaming was just extremely frustrated and said, like, guys, this is starting to become a little bit silly. We need to finally take you down there. So for Granite to come out as strong as they do here, that's already a great start for them. Level 10 versus level 10 right now. Big arrow is coming, and connects, and Ty should fall here. Gets the ult through on the other hand, and so much for dying. Ty is not dying, and that's that instead they're trying to turn it around here, and they nearly do. Nicely done by Coffin Girl, but here comes the Triple Panda, and that's another problem for Hanzo. He's already down, and he might not be the only one, because Banana Age is all of a sudden slowed down too. In comes Jaina with the slow. The Pandas want blood, but they don't get it. And they get a Dragon Knight. Lauba is sitting there, and now turns into the Lizard with a big, big axe. Bottom of the map, more pressure against another fort, and things are currently looking amazing for the blue team. Hazo Ops in trouble and he is dead. Five kills against zero, another punt against Nick. He's being attacked too but still has a power slide to get out here. But oh boy, things are not looking pretty for the red team. Washed up fans definitely don't enjoy the first seven minutes of this game. Ty is still active all the way up at the top and is currently just shadow waltzing away here. As we're having uh, the mid lane attacked. Another punt against Mena this time. Uh, not quite connecting. Outside of the range. Arrow connects. And that might be the end of Taranda finally. Especially with ETC now jumping in too. Henning is finally dead. I mean, they're pushing everything on Taranda. And she is down. Fury though, he's able to jump out. And Ty is making the rotation from the top as he's saying, all right, seems like you guys need a little bit of help there. Has his ult back up too. So there we go. The crushing jaws. Not to be confused with the clenching cheeks. That's something different. But yeah, uh, he actually had a good ult against ETC earlier as the aggression came when he was near the dragon statue. Bottom map. Time for the camps again. But you look at the experience lead that we see for Granite Gaming. That's an entire level that they're currently rocking here. 
So they have a big advantage in this game now. And since they've nearly... Well, yeah, they're already invading the camp over on the right side, and obviously because they can, it's an easy one for them. No problem whatsoever. Can't be contested anyways, but since there was no one around to even contest it, that didn't even become a question. But they still have to defend the bottom of the map. That's why we're having the camp pushing through, and Chen is the one heading into it and saying, Okay, boys, I'm gonna take care of that. I'm gonna be the one to get that done. So, in the mid lane, one forward is still there. Main is looking for those hooks, and now we have Kalthas next to him, so the Gravity Labs follow-ups is definitely a possibility. And then you normally want to have the burst damage. There's not really too much of that. But keep in mind that it's not only about the gravity laps. You also have the power slide from ETC. So there's two tools that can be used for CC if you're going into 5 versus 5 or 4 versus 4 setups. Try and play around that. The problem is really going to be Fury and those team fights. There is a reason why the Panda is banned out in Europe. North America might not really respect the Panda after the recent changes in the last two patches, but Europe definitely does. And, well, in this case, the Panda is getting attacked already. Bless Shield is coming out. Is it time for the triple? Fury, is he going for the triple Panda? So far he doesn't. It's just playing it a good, around the good old one. And there we go. The arrow connects with Ophia, but Hazel is in trouble. ETC is already down. Down and it is panda time as we have fury starting to jump in but he's also spreading the living bomb and that is actually a nice setup for kalthas to spread the bombs as quickly as he can and even with kalthas surviving at the end of the fight the reality still is that granite gaming got a kill and washed up is now down two levels and only active on the map with a five versus four meaning we have another dragonite possibly so Tai is already on the move again, takes the fountain down, and they are moving into the middle, and Fury gets the DK. DK number two. Panda turns into a dragon. Is moving across the map here, and the fire breath is already coming in. Ah, the bad boy here is already poking away. They're focusing on the bottom of the map immediately. Let's have a look at the damage output. Tai with 25,000, 24,000 for Chen. 22k for Hanzo himself. And the only one that hasn't died on the right side of the map for washed up is Rhaegar. Yeah, Banana H is the only one. That wall, by the way, is taken down immediately. And Mena has eaten a bit of damage there now too. But obviously with the patchwork creation, Rhaegar should have an easy time healing him up again. But the wall is definitely falling. ETC is capitalizing on the fact that he has the cooldown ready for the stage dive. So he's getting extra experience for them, trying to close the gap. But we have level 16 in the hands now of Granite Gaming. In addition to the setup for Chen, we have the Numbing Blast now. Celerity as well. And they're already putting the pressure onto the keep. They won't be able to take it down this early in the game. But damn, man, they are really starting to just put Washed Up into a corner. Washed up, they are just like that box in a corner that just gets hit the entire time trying to play defense and wear the opponent down by tiring them out. And if they can pull it off, then they might be ready for a comeback. But at this point, it just seems a matter of time until they're finally going to crumble, until the knees get weak, and they are just dropping. But maybe once they have 16 talents, they might be able to fight back here. That could be a monster hook from Mena. Problem is, he obviously also doesn't have Gorge, so it's not like they can hook Gorge and carry the target behind the gate. Another problem for them right now. And with camps taken, there's another push through the bottom of the map. ETC the entire time is just on a vacation. He's vacationing at the top lane, he's having a great time here, just playing with the minions, enjoying his life. Phoenix comes out again, and ETC now has to be careful and could jump in, but the ults are ready, and so is the Triple Panda. They're going for the keep, and they're trying to get this one. Here comes ETC. The stage dive is in. Panda is jumping out. The arrow is connecting, but so does the Bless Shield. And the clutching jaws as they are nearly getting the clutch kill against Hanzo, but the heal is there, and instead it's ETC that falls. The cow is down once again. There's meat on the dinner table as another hook connects with Lauba, but they're still poking away against the keep, and it looks like Wash Up is going to lose this one. Keep is about to fall. Mena gets out as Ty is shadow waltzing his way to another destructive structure. And that is going to be the end of this fight. And also the end of the aggression for now from Washed Up. 18 against 16. Even talents. And Mena actually heading into Ignite with this lineup now. Actually not Mena. Kelthas that is. Hazorps. So Ignite gets taken after the Pyromaniac. Not specking into the Sunwell's Fury. And yeah, with this, 
Let's see if that works out. The one thing that I have to admit is that especially the living bombs can be pretty cool against the triple panda. I gotta admit that, just freely. This is actually a really nice setup. If they are just close together, the damage keeps spreading and then you're getting a lot of value out of this. They have to go for aggressive plays. It's exactly what they're doing right now. The aggression is there though and the panda's jumping in. There's the water elemental. Once again, as Ty have the ult, Ty has the ult. Isn't using it yet, but Mena, he takes the camp, but he pays for it with his life. Ty is trying to clutch it here once again. Nick also sliding out as they're moving in again with another condemn and another punish. Good setup here. And Slump Grotta attempting to slow them down. The cow in trouble. And that's another kill against Nick, or at least it should be. And it indeed is. Two heroes down. They're looking for more. Double cap at the bottom of the map is already trying to go for the core immediately. Top side also two camps coming in. Ancestral keeping Hazu in play. Banana Age rushing out. And there's the pandas once more on the hunt. The hunt for a doggy. But survives for now. Good damage again. I like what we're seeing with that. The problem is that washed up fans are not gonna like seeing this here because that could be the end of the game. And they're not committing. I could have seen Granite Gaming going for it here. Seriously. Two heroes down and that push already being in place. I could have totally seen them going for it and trying to burn the core down. Instead, they're trying to play it safe. Level 20 is close, so why not play for the next Dragon Knight and try and finish it with that and the Storm Talent advantage? That what they are currently trying to do. In terms of the damage output, just to give you guys another idea of what we're looking at here. 42,000 damage from Coffin Girl. Aggression at the top and Henning is down. Bye bye Tyrande. Arrow misses completely and that's the end of Stitches. And ETC stage dives straight into trouble. But still had the power slide and is trying to move out here. Fury is already on his ass though. There's a couple of slows coming. Swamp Grotta. Whoa, ice blocking the damage. And here comes the ETC kill. They're trying to get another one as the water elemental slows down the dog for a moment. They're trying to flank in against him now too. Banana H is on the run. Ah, little doggy, you can run but you can't hide. And they are definitely going to make sure that he is going to die too. Boom! That's a dog down. Kicking him when he's on the ground. Level 20 is now ready for the blue team. And they're going to go for Dragonites. From Grotta, the one channeling it through. Has the winter mute. And with a DK and three heroes down, well, Mena's gonna be back on stitches in just three seconds. But with this many heroes down, they're not even bothering with the keep in the middle. They're immediately gonna try and move down to the bottom of the map to go for the core here and take the lead in this series. Things are starting to set up and Hanzo already dying. Damn, the pandas again aggressive here. But it's time for the core and it's time for Hanzo to maybe fall as well. There's the attempt from Ty to tag him down. That didn't quite work out, but Hanzo is still in slight trouble. And that's going to be the end of Kelthas. Or is it? <laughs> yeah, flashlight kill. There we go. ATC jumps in. Ty actually is a bit low, but that Dragonite is murdering the shields and it's going to get the kill here too. And they're going for ETC as well. Ty just shadow waltzing around it. And we have ETC surviving thanks to the Ancestral. But the core keeps falling as all of this is happening. Down to 50%. Another big, big punt. And that's the end of the cow and the dog. Game number one taken easily with 16 kills against two by Granite Gaming here at the grand final of the Hero Side Premier Series. Game number two or number three, so we have to go over this just in a second because as you can see at the overlay already, Granite Gaming is in the lead with a 2-0 in the best of five, not a 1-0. And that's a little bit my mistake here because I assumed falsely as it turns out that there was no map advantage coming from the winner bracket. That's normally something in my experience is mostly reserved for best of seven series. But in this case, we actually have that. So because Granite Gaming was able to come through the winner bracket and didn't go come through the loser bracket, they come into the series in the grand final with a 1-0 lead over their opponent. Therefore, the score in this setup now is a 2-0 since they just won the first actual map that has been played. So in theory, we could actually see the entire series end right now, depending on what Granite Gaming can pull off here. But in this case, we get Chen banned out immediately. Doesn't really shock after the last map. Again, the Chen ban has been pretty much a staple in pretty much every series so far. So if anything, it was more so a surprise that he was let through in the last draft. 
more so than anything else. But now we have not only Chainbind down, but Abathar that leaves Zeratul open. Which has been a hero that Granite Gaming relies on heavily. And Tracer. Both of them. Both of Ty's heroes are open. And Vala is open as well. Completely different bands now for this game on Towers of Doom. But yeah, just to reiterate that, this is a double elimination system. So we have a winner bracket and a loser's bracket. And in the best, uh, for example, at a mid-season brawl for HGC, when you have a best of seven final, it's absolutely not uncommon that the team that comes through the winner bracket gets an advantage by having already a 1-0 lead heading into the series before the first map is being played. And in the best of seven, I personally actually agree with that to an extent. There's always the argument being made that if you come from the winner bracket, you have to play less games than your opponent that reaches the grand final through the loser's bracket. So the winning team or the winner bracket team has more time to prepare, they are a little bit fresher, they can study their opponent, they have the chance to also watch the loser bracket final and can therefore look at the strategies a little bit more and can therefore prepare a strategy of their own. But that has been a discussion that has been going back and forth for a long time right now. In an online setup, most of the time you have it starting from 0-0 zero, zero standing, which is actually what I assumed, so it's my mistake to not clarifying that with the admins here. But I hope that that little introduction definitely cleared that up. Probably going to talk about this quickly as we're heading into the game itself, and I guess some people on YouTube will skip the draft. But just for everybody that is watching this already here, so a little explanation. As I said, Vala wasn't banned, which means that she's open for the taking, and since Washed Up has actually relied on the double support Vala strategy a lot, they're doing that again in this game. Washed Up has currently Vala plus Tacita, so together with that they have ETC. And as double support Vala compositions go, this is about as good as it gets for your baseline on it. So this is a really cool setup for them. Granite Gaming has actually gone into Rega very, very early here, which is kind of surprising since Hennig is normally just in a massive Tyrande fan. But with Rega, they can focus on the pumpkin camps a little bit more. They have also the, well, first of all, the Ancestral that can be used to save any target there uh, from the burst damage. And you have a cleanse ready for yourself, too. There's Diablo. Ooh, and Medivh is coming in. Okay, things are getting spicy. Potential ley line into an apocalypse that we're now going to see with the added Ring of Frost, of course, as well. Yeah, washed up with the last two picks on their end. And again, for the main support, there's still a few options. You can go into Tyrande, you can go into Malfurion. They could play it with ETC solo at the front, but I would still expect an offlaner to be chosen for them. And it's Zul. <laughs> okay! They are going for Zul here. Well, with the double support, that might actually work out. Personally, not a big fan of Zul per se, but in this lineup with something that's needed for wave clear on the two lanes, that might work out after all. It's gonna be an interesting one, though. That's not the pick that I expected by any means. And, well, Towers of Doom, it's map number two. But, of course, that additional lead coming in from Granite Gaming, so it could be the last one. So Washed Up is putting everything on the line here. And it's Thrall against them. Thrall at the top lane for Granite Gaming, as we have a Fury in play for that. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's head straight in into Towers of Doom, which could, in theory, be the last map of this particular Grand Final. All right, there's a little bit more confusion here as we're heading into the second game, but let's go through the lineups real quickly. And if you paid attention in the draft, then you will already be in for a little bit of a surprise, but I'm going to go over that in just a moment. First, on the left side for Granite Gaming, we have Henning on Rega, Tai on Jaina, Svamgrot on Medi, Fury on Zul, and Lauba on Diablo. For Washed Up, we're seeing Hazops on Thrall, Banana H on Malfurion, Nick on ETC, Main on Tacita, and Chris on Vala. Oh. And if you paid attention in the draft, then you're already asking yourself, wait a second, why the hell is Zul now played by the blue team, and why does Washed Up have Thrall? Wasn't it the other way around? And indeed, you would be right, but as it turns out, Washed Up actually didn't want to pick Zul. They wanted to pick Thrall, and it was a bit of a misclick there. They didn't pick in time, and Zul was selected. So Zul got actually chosen for them, and immediately as it happens in the chat, which as an observer you cannot see, they immediately said like, hey guys, we didn't want to pick Zul, we actually wanted to pick Thrall. 
And Granite Gaming just started laughing and well, as they picked their own hero said, well, we actually wanted Zul and now we have to pick Thrall. So the two teams just talked about it real quickly and said, well, we can just swap the hero out and everybody is happy and there's no harm, no foul. So it was easily agreed on that Washed Up would go into the hero that they initially wanted to pick, which was Thrall and Granite Gaming did not have to deviate away from the Zul choice that they actually wanted to go for. And therefore everybody is happy and are also a little bit confused mainly. Also do I clear up another point, if you haven't really paid attention to the draft the entire time, you should probably at least check out the start of it if you're currently watching this video on YouTube. Because we have now a 2-0 lead in this best of 5 for Granite Gaming. Despite the fact that only one map has been played, that was on Dragonshire, and that comes because Granite Gaming gets an advantage coming from the loser's bracket over Washed Up, who had reached the Grand Final through the lower bracket. Uh, Granite Gaming comes from the winner's bracket. I think I messed this up, sorry. So yeah, the winner bracket team gets an advantage here with a 1-0. It's a little bit atypical in a best of 5. You usually see that more so in best of 7 setups. But therefore, this could be the last map. And ooh, Svam Grotta goes down early. Loses the stacks on Medivh. Not a big problem if you die before the 2 minute mark, you usually don't have this many stacks anyways. But now we have 2 kills against 0, as Washed Up is obviously going to try their best to force at least another map out of their opponent. That's always a little bit awkward when you're going into the grand final and you're losing 2 maps and BAM you are out. So as it stands they are going to be very very eager and motivated to make sure that they are starting to turn this franchise around. But in order to win the grand final here, they now have to win three games in a row. Ty is getting attacked here. Main actually just sliding away. And Main might be able to get out. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. I mean, his idea was obviously to just sneak past, go into the bush, and then half zone back. But they didn't forget about him. That was the one small hope that he had, and it didn't quite work that way. So we have at this point the triple altar phase starting up on Towers of Doom. A little bit of an adjustment also from uh, Tacita. Carlos and Brace now for the first time for the increased lifesteal over the armor that we've seen in previous games when they played their Bala setup. Hot Pursuit together with Arsenal on 7 and Punishment on level 4. Still the choice. Double channel at the top as both of the teams are going for the left and right side. Which means that the bottom of the map is mostly going to be fought over. The third altar in this great slide from ETC here. And obviously Medivh with the portals also. Keeping things interesting. Uh, Lauba is currently sitting in the position at the bottom of the map, but he can't really push forward, so they were zoned out from the altar, and that allowed Washed Up to channel another one right here. Ty already sitting in place. We're currently having Thrall also with his quest completed on level 1, still working on the Frostwolf pack on level 4. Uh, Zul still with a bit of an easier rotation against Hazorp, so he's currently winning that rotation between the top lane and the mid lane when it comes to wave clear. One of the reasons why Tassada is actually starting to slide into the mid lane every now and then to help out with the storm. Helps him to gather stacks, obviously, for his level 1 quest as well, and he nearly reached the first quest reward. And Wash Up has actually taken a bit of a lead there. But the lockdown, again, against Lauber as he comes in. Malfurion has the roots ready, but so is Medivh. Now, ETC is also pretty useful when it comes to portal control. He can always push an opponent back and create a little bit of space there. That might become an issue later when there's more burst damage. So they can take a target down when they're starting to move in for this. Having psionic projection also now taken. And 17 stacks for Medivh. So Svamgrola so died once early on, but now is really the time when you want to make sure that you're not falling anymore until you have the quest completed. Can't really afford to fall too often if that's the case. Uh, Nick is now rotating in, obviously, too. Another nice poke coming from Chris himself. As he's trying to keep Svamkrota low, and they're just coming in as the Raven form is activated once again. And Zul is rotating. The roaming Zul, ladies and gentlemen. Alex the Pro G style, what we currently have. 18,000 damage already for Chris, which isn't bad. I mean, compare that to what we're seeing from Granite Gaming, when you will see a very big difference here. But again, Granite has of course the advantage of also rocking Medivh and the portals and the plays with the Will of Force can always be a big issue. Now the one thing that I still have to point out is that on level 10 there's obviously a lot of synergy with heroics for Granite Gaming that Washed Up just doesn't have to that same extent. You have a Leyline into Apocalypse, into Ring of Frost. If you want to go down that path, 
Now, there's obviously other variations, but if you want to go into a full Wombo Combo setup, that's the option that you definitely can pull. And, yeah, that Ley Line would also work with the Skeletons. Main again on the channel. And there is definitely a chance that they're going to let this slide until level 10 is there. But Granite is so far still poking around it. Two stacks, four thrall, tie in trouble, and might fall, but gets out. Mane with the channel on the other hand is able to get another four points taken off the core of Granite Gaming. And that puts them down to 28. 36 against 28, nine and a half against level nine. And well, things are looking peachy. Fury is sitting at the top of the map and still pushing this out and Thrall has to react and is every single time that it happens losing a bit of experience but they still hold the lead. Nearly level 10 now, 4 washed up and they are so far looking pretty solid with this. Zul also with this build getting again the Harvest Vitality in the Grim Scythe. So he's currently making those rotations easy peasy and you can really see that Thrall by himself is in trouble trying to catch up with this. So it's nearly impossible for Thrall to meet the speed with which Zul rotates between the lanes right now. That's why we've seen Mana so many times in the mid lane trying to help out with this. But that said, there is now a five man at the bottom of the map as they're desperately trying to get that bell tower. And momentum is everything in this game. Now once again, they're going with the ring of... Fr oh, that setup didn't look good. Yeah, only Nick caught by the ley line and then the ring of frost misses. That was not a good setup for Granite. Here comes also the Apocalypse, that does connect with Thrall at least, but that's not enough to really win them a fight. Hazops comes in with the Sundering, but they're already trying to retreat here. Quest completed for Medivh, that's important, but he can't save Jaina, so that kill has already been secured. Three kills against one now, and Washed Up is gaining momentum right now. Alright, with this we're having currently that little setup here as Nick is starting to take down another bell tower. Well, the first one for this series at least. But all the way up at the top, we're having our little setup here. Yeah, there's already a channel coming in. And on the right side the same thing. So again, in this particular rotation, it's pretty much the, the main thing. It's usually a, a change unless you have a massive advantage for one of the teams. And that's now five points off the core of Granite Gaming and only three shots fired against Washed Up. So we have 23 against 33 that are currently locked down here. So yeah, big, big setup for them. And yeah, with this so far, we're actually looking at a lineup in uh, which we could have a massive snowball for washed up if they hold on to the bottom lane the entire time if they are able to control this maybe grab another bell tower that would be fantastic for them but let's see what else they can pull i mean for now there's still talents obviously that they haven't even completed yet you're looking at the frost wolf pack three stacks once that's completed your mana management and the cooldown reduction is going to do wonders especially against lauber once that the alpha wolf is claimed if they go there down that path and we're seeing Tassada getting slowly and steadily also straight in on the thousand stacks that he needs to get the extra damage output. So yeah, <laughs> made it lasering fury as well. It's at 880 stacks now. But I'm still waiting for a successful granite game in combo uh, around the ring of frost. And that is a huge threat. If you get that combo out nicely, then you can get an easy kill. Yeah, and there it is. Banana H, nicely done by him, saves himself, that's the mosh pit against two, setup was way better this time, but ETC dies still, and they're going for Malfurion too. Great setup from Granite, didn't get the kill against Malfurion, was good counter play from Washed Up, but still two kills for the blue team, and Washed Up is starting to lose the dominant position they had at the bottom of the map, and they might lose more, Sundering is coming out, uh oh, Mena tried to escape into the, onto the wrong side of this. So he falls to, and that's the end of that particular bell tower. Gets reconverted, and all of a sudden we're looking four kills against three, and we have an advantage in everything but points on the core for the blue team. Four shots fired, and that reduces the core down to 29 HP against the 23 that we're seeing for Granite. So when it comes to points on the core, Washed Up still has an advantage. But... We are still looking at a setup where we have slowly momentum gained by Granite Gaming, especially on the experience side. And they're already setting this up at the bottom of the map again. And I have to highlight that once more. That wasn't a perfect setup with the Ring of Frost either. I mean, it wasn't horrible, but they only caught a single hero. And that's also because Washed Up does a fantastic job just splitting the entire time. 
It's very similar to what you usually attempt to do when you have Zeratul against you. You want to make sure that Zeratul can't catch too many heroes with the Void Prison for a Ring of Frost setup. In this case, it's Medivh, and it's a little bit easier to deal with Medivh's Leyline than with Zeratul's VP, because VP is obviously instantaneous. But they are doing a great job just dodging out on that. Usually one hero gets caught, but still, that is one kill that you usually can guarantee. And if that happens, then you're fighting a 4 versus 5. But the game is obviously not over by any means. This is still a very, very close call between the two. Granted, Gaming has now a big lead through the 2-0 and the winner bracket advantage that they get. But can they really clutch out a 3-0 against their opponent in this best of five at the grand final? That's the bigger question. And let's not forget, Washed Up needs to do more than only win on Towers of Doom. They need to win three in a row if they want to crown themselves the champion here. And with this, we're having again triple altar coming up on the map and with that advantage that we see for granite gaming if they get two out of the three that would get them a little bit closer and really close the gap between the two teams on core hp at the top lane i would again expect the trade and that's exactly what's happening right now so both of them just going for the trade here so it's going to be a one one and the fight is going to happen at the bottom of the map as we're seeing everybody taking position for this four shots fired against four 19 against 25 points now and this is going to be the big one who takes number three? Zul is already moving in, slicing and dicing with the side. They go for Azu. 16 is close, quest completed. That was a big one, that was necessary. But once that 16 is in, that is going to be a massive advantage and would mostly guarantee Granite Gaming that altar. So if Zul is able to get that experience for them through those waves, that's all that they need to get. And they are really trying to buy themselves the time right now. This is actually looking better and better for Granite Gaming. It's only a little bit of time that's missing and there's the level 16 talents. Now they have them and this should be where Washed Up has to make a choice. Do they want to really fight this? I don't think so. They're most likely going to retreat. Thrall gets caught. Where's the Epoch? There it comes and the combo is not so Successful. The Sundering is in, one connected with a Ring of Frost. A little bit scrappy what we're seeing from Granite, but they're still having washed up on the run, and they're likely to get that altar now. They wanted kills and they didn't get them, but they still grab the objective and start to close the gap in points on the core. Lauber missed the combo into the a pod. Here comes the mosh pit now. Ice blocked already, nicely done, and Malfurion is in trouble. He goes down. And they're trying for another kill here. Starting to poke away against the rest of the team. Once again, the portal is there. Five kills against three now. And the advantage and the experience is coming into play for Granite Gaming. That really worked well, having that extra talent through their objective. But again, the combos are not as clean as you would love them to be. And again, we have to always put that in perspective. You are going up against a team that is incredibly strong that also expect these combos to come out. So they're obviously trying to shut them down as they emerge. But usually Granite Gaming is having a bit of an easier time trying to pull that off. Great slide by Nick. And again, a stun into the wall. Trying to buy the space here. Yeah, but the pumpkin camp is taken. And every single time, Nick creating the space with ETC is a lot of the control during all of these fights. So now once again, five kills against three right now. What do we have? Uh, Mela's trying to push that now forward. And again, with the thousand stacks that he has and the psionic echo, they all of a sudden have enough AoE to really soften the targets up pretty easily. A level advantage though. That's a big one. Alders are activating again. It's a double alt at this time, but they're starting to poke down the bell tower here. Medivh has the ley line back up, so they have the setup for a wombo. If he sees an opportunity, they might just take it. And look at Fury, he's sitting at the side here. He wants to come in with Zul. And they're just waiting for the flank. Already the slow against Chris. Vala has been dishing out the damage the entire time. Went into Manticore to keep Lauber a bit at bay. And zone him out. If level 20 is there and they have the far fly quiver, that's another one. Uh, at right now, we're having again the setup down here at the bottom. Hazobs is going to get this one for free. Up to the top though, Fury gets interrupted. Well played. Well played by the red team. So now they have to fight for this. 15 points against 21. <laughs> yeah. A one versus one trade. They would have been happy with this. But they are far from getting that. And here comes the softening up. That bell tower is soon going to be taken. So at this point, Nick is getting attacked. They're trying to set something up. Leyline against one. He has the setup. And Chris gets out as the sudden ring comes in. Nice dodge. Yep. 
That was a really, really good setup here by them again. The Thundering comes out, destroys the place, and these interruptive setups that we're seeing from Washed Up are exactly what they need to pull off here. Bell Tower at the bot lane has been converted now, so five against three, and Washed Up, they want the victory here. If they get the five, that means ten points on the core, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. Boom. Ten against twenty-one. There's still a lead in kills for Granite Gaming, but that doesn't mean jack shit if you're not able to get the objective. You can kill as many heroes as you want. That doesn't win you the game. No, 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 no. They're trying to make another play for Nick, but I gotta say, Nick on ETC, on the front line, just generally speaking, we've been talking about his Garrosh, we talked a bit about his ETC, we talked about his Diablo. It is amazing to me how strong Nick is in a main tank position. Considering that this is far from the role that he played in HGC for Team Method, it is amazing how great a tank player that guy actually is. So his ETC plays have been so disruptive and Granite Gaming has really been on the receiving end of this. The portal control was nice, he just doesn't throw out cooldowns. Every single move that he makes really has sense there. He slid into an APOC a little bit earlier, but that was... You can definitely chuck that up to a bit of a, a misplay, a bit of a mistake there. I don't think the APOC was even in play as that happened. But outside of that, his interrupts against these combos is a pretty solid one. And he's been doing well here. But again, they will get the fort or the uh, the bell tower at the top. Zulu is going to make uh, sure of that. But we have now another altar spawning in the middle of the map. And this one they kind of have to fight for. The experience gap is also not that big anymore. There is still a lead for Granite Gaming, but... I don't know. If they don't take that bell tower, if they don't fight for it... Oh, sorry, the, if the altar then I think the next one is going to be on even talents again. So this is probably the best chance for Granite Gaming to at least start to take uh, that lead down a little bit. And maybe also work on winning another team fight, Unless they really feel that level 20 is all that they need here. That's the portal attack already against main. Eh? Okay, skeletons out now too. The setup against ETC. APOC and this time Thrall is down. No chance for him to get the Sundering out either. Yep, the connect against ETC. Mosh pit cleansed out right away, and Nick is in trouble. Nick is low and is trying to rush away. They control both of the bell towers at the bot lane, so that gives them a lead. Level 20 talents are now in as well, which gives us the mortal wound for Zul. And there's the shots fired, but that's only four at this point. 17 against seven points on the core, because the pumpkin camp made it through too. And they are going straight in for Mena. Mena's gonna fall. Tassada's definitely down. But as we said before, kills don't mean jack shit if you can't win the game itself. They're trying to get a few more over there to the right side, but Banana Age lives. So they're going to reclaim some of the bell towers, and they actually make the decision to go into the bell tower on the right side, already accounting for the fact that these minions are going to start to take this bell tower down slowly, as all of the minion waves coming from the right team side will be eliminated by they, them themselves. So they are very likely to take both in pretty quick succession. But there's also only half a level that Washed Up is missing to get their Storm Talents. And that is an issue. Uh, 7 against 17. That one is taken down. Retaking off the top. That gives us a 5 versus 3 situation now in the game when it comes to Bell Tower Control. Alright. <laughs> it starts to become a bit spicy. Especially since we now have Far Flight Quiver. We have two fantastic talents now. First of all, we have the Twilight Archon, which pretty much guarantees that Main is going to have Archon up for the entire duration of a team fight. And in addition to that, we have Far Flight Quiver. And that talent in conjunction with Manticore on level 16 is insane. Lauba is not gonna have a good time here. I mean look at the damage output of Vala. 90 uh, sorry, 87,000 against the 40th. Oh my god, now we're talking. Oh, ho, 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 and they only lock one down. Nick slides out, but damn, that setup just didn't work out for them. It's just these APOC timings that are not really working for them, but holy hell, that looked insane. But now they burned nearly every single heroic that they have, with the exception of the Ancestral. They're trying to make a play. A nice Hellgate attempt by Lauber, but it didn't work out either. Nick ruined the play once more, but they got the channel, and that's now another five shots fired, so we are talking seven against 12. Still incredibly close here. God damn. <laughs> These setups. Unbelievable. And it was again Nick. Again Nick, who started to ruin a lot of the players here with another great face melt. But I honestly want to see how Lauber is going to deal with Vala now, because 
Diablo is going to have a rough time with the Manticore. And Chris is fantastic when it comes to, um, to mechanics. So he is going to poke Lauba down into oblivion. Just look out how quickly Diablo is at just 50 HP. And he is on 100 souls. So the damage is increasing for Bala. I mean, just look at this. Bala gets so much damage with every single hit against the front line. It's now at 100,000 pretty much. And they are poking another Bell Tower down. The control is lost slowly and steadily from Granite. The 20 was a big, big issue. And despite the fact that they are more than doubling the kills from Washed Up, they are about to be eliminated in game number two. Uh, Bell Tower control at the bot lane goes to them. Another big push up at the top with double cam, but that doesn't really help you. They need to get a proper setup. They need a ley line that connects with two, three heroes, and then the follow-up has to be absolutely on point. If that works for Granite, then they have a chance of taking this. If not, I think we will see Washed Up claiming victory here. And there's the ley line. Where's the follow-up? A punk! And they get the insta-kill against Malfurion. The mosh pit on the other hand. And that's the kill against Jaina against Medivh and what a turnaround it's Nick Nick and Nick oh but he might die after all he does Lauba gets the ancestral and all of a sudden it's a three versus three but Bala is still there and Manticore takes him down easily double bell tower on the map they need to if they want to win it right here Henning is low but is able to escape and we have still Diablo back to business but of course now without the souls what a setup Unbelievable. Here comes the interrupt again, and yep, they are fighting for both right now. It was a fantastic kill, but that turnaround from Washed Up was absolutely fantastic. These mosh pits, these plays from ETC are great. They go for the double stun! Oh, and the kill against Tassada! Tassada is down, Fury tries to go for Mala, but gets destroyed. And that's the kill as Chris goes in. 130,000 damage. Far Flight Quiver plus Manticore. It's the dream combo. Two points on the core, and there's only a single altar left, and everybody is just playing around it right now. Diablo tries to get close enough, but one root is all they need. The Master Taunt is already out. They know it's over. This is game. We have washed up, putting a point onto the scoreboard, and forcing the next game in the grand final. GG, and well played. Game number three, everybody. Again, score slightly misleading because Granite Gaming comes into the grand final with a winner bracket advantage in the best of uh, five series. But we are in the third game and Washed Up has put their point onto the scoreboard. So now they need to win two more if they want to make sure that they crown themselves the champion of the Heroes High Premier Series here. We have a Vala at this point, banned out immediately. They're done with this double support Vala crap. Especially, again, the late game combo with the level 16 and 20 talent allowed Chris to murder Diablo and he had just no sustainability at that time. So, huge problem for them. Chen gets banned too. That doesn't come as a surprise considering the performance that we've seen on Dragonshire. Chen these days extremely strong, mainly because of the level 10 ability Storm, Earth and Fire. But we are on Infernal Shrines, so there is actually a chance that Washed Up is going to play this again with Kalthas. I would expect Kalthas at this point, to be honest. My question is, A, are we going to see Greyman? That's the first one. And I also really want to know what's happening around the tanks, exactly. I was more so questioning whether we see Diablo being banned out against Washed Up, but Garrosh against Nick makes also a lot of sense. We still have the first pick for Granite Gaming, but I don't really expect them to go into Diablo as their first pick. I would more so see Henning trying to go into Turanda again, maybe even Malfurion. There's other picks, of course, that would work here too. But if they want to play with Dibbles again, they definitely could. I mean, he is a fantastic hero for the map and could definitely be claimed by them. But Diablo gets banned out, so that question doesn't even pose itself. So we have already Garrosh and, in addition to that, Leo banned out. And with that focus onto the tanks, ETC is a good pick for Granite Gaming. They love to take him early anyways, because it gives them uh, a position where they can switch between main tank and off tank and can use around that. But... Let's see what else we're going to get with this. 
double pick for washed up and right now again you have to question a little bit of how you want to start into the draft here the tanks are already so heavily prioritized that an early tank might actually be a good um, choice for them but they're not doing this they go into Hanzo and they go into Turanda both solid picks Hanzo played on this map a lot in a first pick position and Turanda for obvious reasons also to take it away from etc again a lot of these plays are not only because you want to have the hero for yourself but it's also because you're trying to deny to your opponent and we've seen previously what granite gaming has been doing with taranda and etc we've also been seeing what zeratul and abatha have been able to accomplish for granite gaming so ty is all of a sudden the one where the limelight's on and yeah this just became incredibly interesting in this, I mean, honestly, this is going to be a really interesting game. You have already a Zeratul Abatha now set up against Hanzo plus Turanda, and they can ban out another tank now, which is another problem. So there's already ETC, Garrosh, and Diablo taken away, and you can make another ban against the frontline at this point, if that's something that you feel is worth it here. And there is now a limited amount of tanks that you would really play with this composition. Now you could go into... Ah, they ban out Hammer. Definitely a good choice too. But what are the tank options? A Nuburak, if you want to go in a blow-up composition with Toranda. Johanna, which obviously adds a bit more wave clear and sustainability, are probably the best chances for washed up those are probably high on the priority now we've seen them with stitches i still don't think that they're going to play stitches here they could with putrid bile you can do a lot on the point they have done that in the past on this map but here's the anubarak pick i like that thrall comes in together with this from hazop so far we are still missing a hero for Chris, but he could be the one jumping onto hanzo if mena wants to play kelthas here which we're going to find out soon would give them also gravity laps that helps when Zeratul makes his approach. But that combo is deadly that Granite Gaming has. And Zeratul is banned against them usually for a reason. But again, just because you get a good composition doesn't mean you win the game. So washed up, they know how to deal with stuff like this. There's Malfurion, and we have Junkrat together with that. So Lauba has to be careful on ETC. I mean, it's the OG hero for Lauba. It's really where the hero that he made a name for himself on before he even joined an HTC team, before all of that even happened, so years ago. But now the last pick is coming in, and what we still need for them is a bit more damage, and that could be another hero for Chris. That could also be a hero that they're swapping over into the hands of Mena, and after Hammer has been taken down, it's Blaze. So triple front line for them right now. We have Blaze in play. Mena is going to stay on Hanzo. And guys, again, this could be the last one. Or Washed Up is forcing the fourth and therefore final map in the best of five because of this advantage that Granite Gaming gets coming from the winner bracket. With this, we're heading into Infernal Shrines. And let's find out which team takes the victory here. Game number three. <laughs> Honestly, every single time we have a winner bracket, a uh, sorry, a grand final with the winner brackets advantage, I get confused by the number of games that we have. So yeah, it is game three, technically, but obviously there's already a 3-1 on the scoreboard, so the team are fighting over the fourth point for that reason. It's a little bit confusing, I know, but either way, we are on Infernal Shrines. We have Henning on Malfurion for Granite. They want to seal the deal here. They want to take the grand final victory with Swamp Grotan Jump. Grad, Lauba on ETC, Fury on Abatha, and Ty on Zeratul. Washed up is playing with Hazops on Thrall, Banana H on Turanda, Mena on Hanzo, Nick on Anubarak, and Chris on Blaze. And yeah, this is again uh, the Zeratul play from Ty. Absolutely infamous by now. Doesn't mean they can't lose with this, they have in the past. But it is incredibly scary. They had games where Zeratul was absolutely controlled throughout the early game, the mid game, and then in the late game, all of a sudden, with the help of Abatha and even without, they absolutely murdered their opponent. Ty playing as usual with his Shadow Hunter on level 1. Even before the changes in the recent patch, he really liked to go into the Might of the Nerezim on level 10 and into the build here, focusing on the auto attacks with Shadow Hunter on level 1. These days, you usually go into Seeker in the Dark over Wormhole on level 7. But outside of that, the build is pretty much untouched. And even Wormhole is occasionally still played by him. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how exactly Washed Up is going to deal with this. The Abatha factor is obviously enhancing this entire setup. Now, one thing that I still want to point out is that Nick can spawn beetles with Anubarak. Shocking, I know. I mean, 
sky is blue, water is wet, and Anubarak spawns beetles. But I'm highlighting it because that means against Abathur compositions, you can oftentimes start to be more aggressive in the early game against structures and try to raise if down a few of these towers and maybe break through a gate. It's oftentimes happening when you have a Greyman in your setup as well, but even without him, there's a chance that they are eventually going to attempt to make a play like this. So with this, we're having uh, right now the uh, six stacks already for the Shadow Hunter here. So he obviously wants the cooldown reduction. There's the pressurized glance for Abertha. Pretty traditional for him to go into that. The only question is usually what happens around level seven. It could be Mule, or you could go into the toxic nests. I guess then again, we had Needle Spine on level four, and we also have Adrenal Overlord. So it, there's two talents where we see some variation. Level 13 is safely in the hands of Soma Transference, and 16 usually gives us the additional speed through the carapace so that you are able to just move those targets in and out a little bit quicker. So there we already have the Sonic Strength, and it is Adrenal Overlord for him right away. So it's a bit of a slower early game. It's all kind of gone down to the objectives here. Obviously, Thrall is determined to get his own quest completed by the time that the Fern Shrine spawns. And yep, there's Zeratul already jumping in. And with the help of Abatha, you always got to be cautious here. Abatha has a bit of a weakness in the early game. The problem with him is obviously that in the team fight you are lacking one hit point pool. And that is because he doesn't have the copy yet. So despite the fact that Monty got buffed a couple of times, the monstrosity hasn't really been taken in any meaningful high-level play. It's just all about having that extra Abathur copy in. And the copy target is very likely going to be Zeratul here if they go for a copy in the first place. Could be ETC too if they're trying to rely on the CC. But outside of that, we'll see how they're running the t level 10 fights. Obviously, this is still early on. And here's a full commitment from Washed Up onto uh, that shrine. And it's likely that Granite Gaming is going to give that up. I mean, look how quickly we have Washed Up with a massive lead for this. Yep, there we go. This is an easy one for them. Zeratul is topside. He's just trying to get some value on the other side of the map through the help of the camp here. And they're trying to burn the tower down, so if they can burn the wall, that would be great for them, because it's unlikely that Wash Up gets much more with their own approach at the bottom of the map. But they're going to take this one, 100%. So there's the Frozen Punisher. At the top lane, Chris has to sit this out. He needs to defend, so which means that the bottom of the map is going to be a four-man push, so the defense should be okay. And there's the adjustment on level 7. So no mule, but we're seeing the slow on the rotation with the vile nest that has been taken here. A uh, bit of damage against Lauba as he gets caught by that frozen explosion. And now that Zeratul is making his way down, the Squishies need to be careful. And they're actually making the play for Nubarak, first of all. <laughs> Still the aggression against the Punisher. But as you can see, it pretty much starts to equalize. So the wall is falling, but that's all that they can do with this. And to be fair, technically, those two towers aren't even down, so they're still contributing to the defense, but they will be eliminated soonish. Whereas at the top, the uh, gate is nearly down, one tower has been eliminated. So it's fairly even when it comes to structures on the map. First objective, not that big of a deal, usually, unless one team has taken a big advantage. And we're having 13 stacks already for Zeratul, which means that he is, well, he's actually going to get more. Might get the completion if he grabs this one as well. Not I can catch it. <laughs> yeah, he's really starting the piss off Chris though. Uh, he is gonna have the cooldown reduction in just a moment, and that makes it pretty amazing for the Shadow Hunter here. It is a pretty fantastic setup. I mean seriously, and there's the completion five minutes into the game. Five minutes and twelve. Not a single kill so far. Again, it could be the last game in this series. Washed up needs to win two more if they want to crown themselves the champion. Talking about stacks, we have 15 as well for Anubarak, so also a nice progress from Nick's perspective. Uh, halfway done with this quest, which would give him the additional 500 HP. Already moving down to the bottom, level 10 abilities this is the next big milestone that both of the teams are fighting for here. And ETC is getting his stacks together as well. Not a little bit of a slower approach. And it's an intense one too, I mean Granite Gaming, obviously they want the 3-1 here. The question is always, can they make it happen? Uh, the push is there towards the top lane, and actually the camps are now taken too, and in this case it's the Rast team, the, the red team doing most of the work. We indeed have the Seek and the Dark, as mentioned previously. Wormhole after the recent patch, not really a staple anymore on that build, got nerfed a little bit too hard. And there we go. 
Having all the ults picked, or pretty much all of them. It is the Mosh Pit that we're seeing. Might of the Nerazim, obviously. With this particular build. Thrall hasn't made his choice yet. And what are we going to get this time? Is it Sundering again? Are they going to try and destroy the setup here? Would be an additional interrupt against ETC's Mosh Pit too. Talking about ETC. Sliding in already. And they're booping Nick out. Nick is on the move. Can they stun him out? Nah. Good reaction from Banana Age. Getting the stun in. Oh, but Nick is nearly falling here. <laughs> the Mosh Pit against four. The Riptire kill. Lauber with the Mosh, but he dies too. It's still a two for one train. Absolutely worth it. Was an insane setup. The plays were absolutely fantastic. Hazops falls at t as Ty with Zeratul and Abatha is getting a third kill in for Granite Gaming. Absolute work of art. Main is on the run and he is going to die eventually. Jumping out as we speak. But I don't think he's going to make it here. Nope. What? What? <laughs> they, I, would, I really thought he saw him, but apparently the vision was he was just outside of the vision range and Mena escapes. But the coolest play was actually when we had Blaze. I don't know if you caught that. But once that we had the attack against the Nuburak, what Blaze did, he didn't try and jet propulsion onto Zeratul. He jet propulsioned onto a Nuburak to make sure that if Zeratul jumps in, he stuns Zeratul. And it just didn't work out. Zeratul came in a second after. Well, it's not even a second, it was half a second later. But that was such a fantastic play by Chris. And this is really one of those small things that can mean the end of Zeratul if the stun connects. In this case, it didn't, but later on it might. Made it down, this time he's dead. He might have escaped earlier because the vision just wasn't there, but now Hanzo is eliminated. But Laupa! Oh, gets away. Fury with a copy. The double Zeratul plays right here. But four kills against one. Granite Gaming is doing well. And Ty is killing it again. Ty is such a monster. Obviously, his life isn't being made a little bit easier thanks to the fact that he has Abatha here. Well, actually quite a lot easier. Uh, Arrow didn't do anything. But still, he is playing this quite nicely. There comes the Earthquake as they're going in again. Mena is nearly back to business with them. Ty is still working for the objective. They have 36, 37. Go for the 38. The kill on the other hand against Malfurion. No, the Mosh Pit is up again. The Mosh Pit is in. Malfurion dies. Can they get the counter kill? That's the big question. The Punisher completely ignoring what's happening after it. And well, as I say, he starts to jump in for the action. And Tyrande is down. Can they get more? There's the push through the top. And look who's coming. It is Zeratul. Ah, gets stunned out though. Okay, there's the poke. Gets one Seeker connected. Oh, ho, 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 and the kill again against Hanzo. Ty trying to get out. Goes in again. Hasuop survives. How on God's green earth was he able to get out of there? Six kills against two now. Level 13 talents are ready for them. And what a beastie game already. Ah, oh, unbelievable here. <laughs> the four down at the top of the map. Now they're a bit 10 minutes into the game and the Punisher is able to get a bit more value at the key wall. But now we have the Soma Transference on level 13. That definitely helps with the survivability of Zeratul. Yeah, and Ty is absolutely murdering it. But Washed Up has made this difficult. Again, the fight and the kills were taken by Granite Gaming. But let's face it, there were a couple of spicy moments for Zeratul and other players where they could have fallen that might have switched the momentum over to Washed Up. So they can definitely still make these plays. Stuns keep coming in. Zeratul is on the point. ETC, is he gonna slide? They have the sustain. Arrow against Zeratul. There's the slide and they're gonna steal the cap away, don't they? Hazops is already in trouble and now they're making the play here. But now Furian is also slightly out of position. Henning might get killed. And yes, gets wrecked. ETC was waiting for the cooldown but couldn't get it. And with that, we're now all of a sudden looking at a camp traded for a kill. Six kills against three now. Zeratul still looking for opportunities to come in together with Abatha. And those opportunities present themselves. It's another quick hit. Comes out immediately. And still at the top lane, a little bit of a symbiote push from Abatha himself as they're trying to get more of an experienced lead as they already have. 16. The next goal for them would give them the speed advantage also for uh, Zeratul. Well, anybody actually that gets the uh, the symbiote and the shield. 
But yeah, that's the setup. Let's look quickly also at the damage output. 21,000 now for Zeratul himself. We're having Junkrat on 20k. 22 for Hanzo. And the quest is completed for Lauber. Quest completion obviously super important at this point. But let's see what's happening around in Uberak. He's at 25 now. So actually Nick should be able to complete this for the next shrine. 5 is not really a big problem. Hazo Ops finds himself against two heroes. He needs to be careful at the bottom. Especially since the 16 talents are now ready. And that gives us for Zeratul now also the Master Warblade. Plus in addition to that the Adrenaline Boost. So now we're talking. This one in particular in conjunction with the Adrenal Overlord is obviously a big problem. If Zeratul can just stick to one target, then that target is very likely going to fall rapidly, especially if it's a squishy. So now three more stacks missing for Anubarak to get the 500 HP, which would definitely help Nick's survivability. So with this, we're having again the push or the position in the middle. That's also where the next shrine is activated. Another 30 seconds, and then we're talking. 16 versus 16. It's going to be an even talent fight, and that's exactly what we want here even talents on them. And Washed Up is already preparing for this. Yep, there's the quest completed. Nicely done. That was important. Mainer needs to be careful. If Zeratul goes in for him, he can't die right now. It's a bit too early. Epicenter is also in play. Fantastic setup now for Anubarak to get those stuns in. Especially if a Hanzo arrow follows shortly after that. And we have the poke. Thunderstorm. Thunderstorm claimed over the potential Alpha Wolf. There is also no Frost Wolf pack that they took this time. So they just exploit the synergy between the level 1 and the level 16 talent. No copy from Abertha yet. Keep the mosh pit in mind. Lauber had already a few really good ones, especially in the mid lane earlier. But there comes the double Zeratul play. They're trying to go for it. Zeratul in the back line. They know exactly where it is. Already the pings keep coming. Fury is going for the objective. Uh oh, Ty gets locked down. There's the Wind Fury. Ty again on the run. And they are chasing him. And he's missing the Singularity Spike, and he's going to fall. Eventually. <laughs> Ty is down, and the fight is still raging on. Washed up with a great control on Zeratul. Very well done by them. Good chance here, yeah, good move by Lauber. Just dodging the arrow as it flies through, but the cocoon is immediately there. And here come the stuns. They cleanse with the Nature's Cure. Good job by Henning. Some Grotta also low, but this is looking good for Washed up now. And they worked hard for this one. They definitely did. Made sure that they control Zeratul the entire time, which isn't easy in these setups. 37, 39, and that's the Arcane Punisher in their hands. Great setup. Really good job by Washed Up. Again, it's not easy to really keep these squishies alive against an Abathur Zeratul composition if you have two good players on those heroes. But they made it happen. They controlled the movement, they had the vision through Hanzo, and once that they knew where Zeratul was, they just hunted him down, split him from the rest of the team, drove a wedge between the two parts of Granite Gaming, and now they are reaping what they saw. The fruits of their efforts is there. They have the Punisher on the map. Ty is again in trouble, and they're dropping him again. Yeah, these sneaky Zeratul setups aren't working for him right now. He's getting shut down all the time. And this is exactly what Washed Up needs to do, and Ty needs to start to react to this as well. I mean, a bit of a 3-2-3 moment as we have the tactical pause coming in, but obviously it just happens as Fury is going for the copy here. The whole idea is to now defend against this, and this is a 5-man push against 4 defenders with 40 seconds on Zeratul, which means that it's quite likely that we're going to have this keep eliminated. It's a big one, a big push, unless they can get a kill. Uh, talking about kills, that's an arrow that connects with the back line. But nah, this one is gonna fall. Great setup from Washed Up. Loving this. Fantastic. Really nice how they control the assassin right now. And Tai has to adjust now. He's died twice. And you can definitely tell that he's not quite used to play against the team that is doing this well, coordinating against his efforts. And to be fair, Washed Up already in the past was eliminated several times by his Zeratul, so it's not like he was not successful in the past against this team. But right now, the synergy and the calls from Washed Up are absolutely fantastic. Their focus is definitely Zeratul, and Tai now has to play a little bit more defensive. He can't quite go as aggressive as he did previously in the backline, because they've definitely now shown that they are able to deal with that when it happens. But it's 18 versus 18. The keep might be down, but it's the mid keep. That's one of the keeps that are always a little bit more iffy. So they're starting to make the plays, yeah? <laughs> and it's close. 
That's a cool grand final. I like it. I would have loved to see a five mapper here, but again, because of the winner bracket advantage, the most that we're going to get out of this game is four maps instead of five. But I take whatever I can get here. It's a really, really fun setup that we're seeing. The push through the middle, thanks to the camp and the cutup pulls, obviously jumping in too. Fury is already sitting there, it's like, ah, team, hello. I can slap it around a little bit, but that's already about it. And ooh, that's an owl connect. Little Aphrodite skin uh, to Rhonda, already connecting the Love Owl with uh, the Slug. And who doesn't love Abathur? Everybody loves Abathur. And talking about it, Zavit will actually pushing out the top lane. Obviously the idea is to get additional experience now as well, because their main goal will be to hit the early level 20. But you're also starting to pressure the keep even more, since you're escorting the catapult in. And someone has to rotate eventually. Ty takes the wave down, now he's going to retreat. Abathur is still body soaking what's happening over here, and they will get the early level 20 for it. Is that gonna make a difference? Most likely not. Both teams will have level 20 for the next objective. I would be surprised if Washed Up allows themselves to get caught by an opponent that has a level 20 advantage over them now. I don't think that is going to happen. But it's still gonna give Granite Gaming a little bit more safety in the setup. And level 20 is honestly a really big power spike for them. I mean, first of all, we're seeing the cooldown reduction coming through with the level 20 upgrade on the heroic ability for Ty. But also, in addition to that, you're seeing Abatha with the double symbiote, and that's really powerful. So here we have it already. Twilight Falls has now been claimed. We're having, in addition to that, the Bolt of the Storm. And here's the Hive Mind. Uh, stuns are coming out, and the Shrine is activating bottom of the map. Incidentally, the one map where we don't have a single four taken out. Both teams can still hold on to it. Uh, but the fountain is eliminated on the blue team side. And they don't have one in the middle either. There's still one four washed up, so that gives them a slight lead over this. And level 20 talents are now obviously ready on both sides, which also, in addition to that, gives us even more control through the rewind from Nick. So, are they gonna go for that? Ty is already starting to sneak in again. Looking for victim. Hazu is waiting for him. Wolf doesn't connect this time. Ty is playing it a little bit safer. The rest of the team is pushing in now too. 12 against two stacks and the camp at the top lane is pushing. So the keep is once again going to be under pressure shortly. And Ty is looking for a target. Gets rooted. Fury actually the one that gets rooted here. Ty is still looking for a victim. Doesn't find one yet. But as long as they delay that fight, they will get value at the top lane. Lauber needs to be careful. Mosh pit not used yet. Here comes the red tire. And the Mosh. Ah, he doesn't use it. No Mosh yet. Already the tranquility being used to keep the team alive. Top lane still pushing, but 38 against 7. There's no doubt anymore that Washed Up will walk away with another objective right now. And they're already sending Chris back. Top lane, Abathur is trying to help the push. And yes, the keep is going to take a lot of damage. But Chris should be able to save it. <laughs> it's actually a bit closer than you would expect. But look who's coming. Uh, missing this. <laughs> Still jumping on it. Chris, yeah. Chris needs to be careful. That didn't work out. And Chris will have to bunk it up. <laughs> Holds the cooldown even. But yeah, that keep is gone. That keep is a goner. <laughs> Damn, son. Keep eliminated. But the bot lane push is still raging on. And that's obviously where the focus now is. Is this keep going to fall as well? Are they going to go for core? That's the question. Now, Blaze isn't here yet. He's now slowly making his way over. That's why we have a 5 versus 4 currently ready. And they're going to try and make the play. Oh, Lauba goes down. Washed up might be able to tie the series up now. They might be able to tie it. Can they make the play? Catapults are pushing in. It's three already. Keep is down. And they have to deal with tie again. Uh, nice bullseye connect for Mayna, but they want to go for the core now. And if those three catapults make it onto the core, they're going to take it. That's exactly why we're already having Swamp Grotha dealing with it. But the core is still falling. Washed up is going to force game number five in this. They are going to force the final map in the best of five series here. Nicely done as Washed Up takes the victory on Infernal Shrine and forces the final map. It's the final map, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't matter if you want to call it Game 4, Game 5. There is obviously an advantage for Granite Gaming as they're coming from the winner bracket into the Grand Final here. But no matter how you look at it, Washed Up has forced the final map in the series, which is really impressive in and of itself, and it is Battlefield of Eternity. And it's party time. 
the Zeratul and Abatha combo. Pretty much, it's not really a secret weapon of Granite Gaming, but it is definitely one of their strongest. Hasn't worked out. And now, there's a chance that Granite Gaming loses another Grand Final to Washed Up. And again, they are pretty familiar with this scenario. I talked earlier about how in the qualifiers, these two teams faced off against each other. The last three qualifiers in the grand final of those qualifiers, and every single time, Washed Up won it. And we had, of course, other tournaments too, where we saw the exact same setup. It was always so close. And Granite Gaming coming from the winner bracket with that 1-0 advantage into game number one must have looked at this and said, you know what, guys? This time we have it. This is going to be easy. And now they're again on map 5, or 4, the final one. And I wouldn't be surprised if in the back of their head there's this little voice that says, it's gonna happen again, it's gonna happen again, it's gonna happen again. Can they dig deep? Can they find the confidence right now to take Washed Up down? That's the question. And Washed Up, they are obviously very, very confident heading into this right now. So at this point, we're actually seeing ETC band out. We have also Zarya band out. And especially if you're not really familiar with Granite Gaming style, you're probably looking at this and you're saying like, why the fuck would you ban Zarya? Zarya has been played from Granite Gaming a lot. Either with a Vala setup, which in this case wouldn't happen because they themselves banned out Vala, or more often with Garrosh because they use the speed barrier on level four to allow Garrosh to run into the opponent's team, flip a target over and then stun it out. So that's just a complete normal build for them, especially on Battlefield of Eternity, which is why Washed Up reacts to it. And here's the hammer again. I was just about to talk about this, because I expected Granite Gaming on the third position to ban out Hammer. I'm actually surprised they didn't do it in the first two bans. But Washed Up knows 100% that if Hammer doesn't get banned out against them on Battlefield of Eternity in the first two rotations, it's going to happen on the third ban. And so this is why they are picking Hammer this early right now, for exactly that reason. It is Hammer time. The Germans have the tanks again. It's Panzer time. And Tai goes for Liming, and we have Anna picked by Henning. Nano boost on Li Ming. That's what we're going to have again. And boys, <sighs> map the final one. Okay. Let's see what we're going to get from here on out. First of all, the bands are coming in. And obviously, Granite Gaming is not going to be happy with that hammer position. But Li Ming can do a lot. I mean, first of all, the wave of force is great against the setup. Ana with the nano boost can help too. But what else are they going to get now? There's Urel. Banned out. Makes Hammer's life a little bit easier too. Of course, Urel with the displacement can come in too and help out there. Not really as much of a focus on the Immortal as we usually see. Well, uh, to be fair, Hanzo is in, Li Ming is in. So kind of scratch that a little bit. But we haven't seen Turanda yet. So Turanda hasn't been taken yet. And Anubarak gets banned first of all. So no Cocoon plays. That's already an important one. No shutdown against this. And what else do we have? Right now, what they really... I mean, again, they need a frontline at this point. And uh, when you're looking at it, we still have Diablo up, we still have Johanna up, which could, would be great to create some space for them too. Haven't seen Nick a lot of Johanna, actually. Well, he played her a bit. It's not like he hasn't played her at all. We've seen him, for example, on Tomb of the Spider Queen on Johanna. Ah, Tyriel. Kind of forgot about him. Usually that's the hero that gets banned against... Uh, Backhold in other teams, but doesn't really make as much of an appearance um, with teams like Granite Gaming and Washed Up, even though we've obviously seen um, Lava sometimes jump into that. But yeah, Tyriel with the Sanctification and the additional shields. Guys, it's... Can Granite Gaming deal with a hammer? Can Granite Gaming deal with that? That's a big question here. They go for Thrall and they go for Coffin Girl. Okay, double mage again. They played it previously and they actually won with it on Dragonshire. Can they pull it off once more though? They have to. If they want to crown themselves the champion here in the Hero Side Premier Series, they have to pull it off now. Chris, what are we going to see for him? Offlane. They need more survivability. Is it the layer defense with now Blaze coming in again together with Tyrael? Old school style. Yes, indeed. Zealot style. That's what we're seeing from them right now. It is the final map in this series. Granite Gaming against Washed Up. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. It's Battlefield of Eternity.
The final map at the grand final. Henning for Granite Gaming on Anna. We have Ty on Orphea, Lauba on Garrosh, Swamp Grotta on Liming, and Fury on Thrall. Two targets that are going to be very happy about an Anna boost now in the game. And on the right side of the map, we have the German with the Panzer again. Hazo Ops on Sergeant Hammer. Yeah, he's ready to drop it. We have Nick on Teriel, Banana HML Fury, and Chris on Blaze, and Mene on Hanzo. And it's time to shine. The German-French connection on the right side of the map. As we have them ready for another victory. They've won two games in a row now. And they want to make it a triple. The reverse sweep is about to be pulled off here. If they can set it up. And we'll find out in just a bit. Thrall against Chris all the way towards the top. And Hazu is ready to drop the hammer once more. His sergeant is absolutely feared in the European scene. Quite often we see the insta ban against Sergeant Hammer when Hazorps is in the game. Especially on maps like Battlefield of Eternity, like Infernal Shrines and others. But there's a double, a double mage against them right now for the massive burst damage against the Hammer. And they're going to try and drop them quickly. And the big question is of course, can they put it off? At this point, top lane should be a bit of an equilibrium unless we're seeing teams rotate, which is likely, to be fair. But it's all about protect the hammer here, obviously. And once the hovering siege mode is in play, it starts to become difficult. Lauber is already trying to make some plays here. And as much as they want, it's going to be tricky after level 4 is in play, since we're obviously having the siege tactics in. Afterwards, the hovering siege mode is making things even more difficult. And yeah. It's all about the question whether or not Granite Gaming is able to deal with Hazops in this game. Pretty much the same setup that we had in the last game, with the exception, of course, that or the difference that we had Zeratul being the big question mark in game uh, in the game on Inferno Shrines, and this time it's Sergeant Hammer. But let's see if they can actually check that out. So already the attack is happening here as they're going to go through the bottom of the map. Yeah, there's a bit of a throw against Nick, but. Yeah, Nick is not going to have any problems here with Tyriel. The mobility that he has in the hero is going to increase later on after we see 13 and 16. But already in the early game, he's not going to be the one really threatened by Garrosh until we have the Warlords challenge. Then it's a bit of a different story when you get the town throw. Top lane, after we've seen Mene help out with the camp, we're seeing Fury under a bit more pressure. He's currently sitting on 9 stacks on his Echo of Elements. He's going to try and get a little bit more than that. And at the bottom of the map, the poke continue. And we have a camp now taken by each team. So, yeah, it's time for the first objective here. Nick actually has to jump back too, as the objective is going to be announced shortly. Both of the teams are obviously going to try and make sure that they have a good setup heading into it. Charge Blast again, indomitable on level 4 here. Traditional build for Coffin Girl, as we're seeing off here with the ancestral strength and then the focus into the dread. So, level 4 with Fright. Specking into that on level 7 most likely too. And it's time for the Siege Tactics. Big one for Sergeant Hammer. And potentially also coming through now with the level 7 talent, the Hovering Siege Mode, during the next objective. If that is going to be delayed for long enough. Which definitely happens sometimes, yeah? But yeah, here we go. <laughs> the slight setup. And look at that, Azobs is already in the perfect position and is starting to shell the shit out of the Immortal here. But Lauba is zoning him out. Without the hovering siege mode, there's not really a problem yet. Fury is still trying to survive up at the top and the Frostbolt Brazilians is helping him out here. 15 stacks for him right now. And they're trying to get the kill in against Chris. But Chris has always known to be a very safe player and that helps him in these solo lane positions too. And he's already moving away from it without any trouble whatsoever. Yeah, the halftime show, on the other hand, is likely to be won by Granite Gaming. And actually, I take it by the smallest of margin. Not even a thousand HP of an advantage. They're going for Chris. There's the setup. And oh, he gets out. <laughs> Swamp Grotta has to activate the teleport as he tries to get out of Hazorps range. Hazorps tempting to run him down here. Not quite working out. Ty, though, also in trouble. But both of the mages are now poking against the Immortal. And let's not forget that once level 7 hits, we're not only getting the Hovering Siege mode. In addition to that, for Granite Gaming, it is going to be Calamity. And this talent can never be understated. Or overstate, that is. It is fantastic. And this is an Immortal for the blue team. Okay, so far so good for Granite. Again, I still expect that they're a little bit nervous heading into this. But obviously now they have to just dig deep and focus on what's at hand. 
and try and see if they can maybe win this game after all and finally crown themselves the champion. It's about time. It's been a while since they actually won a series against Washed Up that really mattered. But now they're trying to set up again Snake, and that's a lot of damage against Terriel. Damn, he survives, but that was a bit of a beating that he received here. 16 stacks on Thrall, can't gather a lot of those while well, you are fighting for the objective, but now that he's back on the bot lane, we're seeing Fury trying to finally get the second charge on the Echo of Elements. Should be able to get this one soon. And there's the level 7. And with that, Hovering Siege Mode is in. Calamity 2. And the Immortal is defeated. No mana for Chris. He needs to back off and needs to do that quickly. Fury, gonna try and get the stacks together. And is able to complete it. 5 minutes and 13 seconds in. Traditionally that would be quite late, but it's not uncommon on Battlefield of Eternity to complete it during the... well, after the first objective. Good move to take the Fountain down, and actually with that heavy aggression at the bottom of the map and nobody rotating in... They're getting a lot of damage onto that 4 too. I don't think they can take it, because the rotation is now underway, but that's free damage that they just got. So they're gonna be pretty happy about that. That's 60% roughly that they just took off that thing. Nicely done. Now, top left side is a bit of a different situation. Someone should try and rotate up to help Fury out. He doesn't only have to deal with two heroes, he also needs to deal with the camp. After they now steal away the one at the bottom of the map, they should definitely try and make that play. In the meantime, we're seeing 12 stacks on the new habits. The Unstoppable with a Pyromania would be fantastic now too. But Li Ming is the one rotating topside, and slowly and steadily that advantage that we've seen from Granite Gaming through the damage at the bottom structure is kind of getting wrecked. Ah, but not quite. Fountain is still there, hasn't been taken down, so they have that still. And they still made the play at the bottom. Okay, time to shine. Objective number two, 20 seconds in. Both of the teams obviously starting to also fight for level 10 abilities, and that's slight lead here. Final map of the series, final map of the grand final. Who is gonna crown themselves the champion here? Swamgrotta, Fury already in position. Lauber trying for the flip, doesn't get it though. No camps taken this time, just spawning now. And there we have it. The poke is starting to go up. The poke from the double mage, by the way. And Hazorp sitting in the middle and getting the damage in on the other side as well. So both of the teams setting themselves up in the position. And it's actually Lauba who gets locked down pretty heavily. The jet propulsion connects with him too. But they're pushing Chris out and the body block is there. Chris about to fall, but he moves out. With 200 HP, he's able to get away. Lauba again low. And now Hazorp zoning out as well. It's a tough one. Oh god, this game is gonna become crazy, isn't it? Yeah, the stacks are there. They're trying to get the quick hit in against the Immortal. Both of the teams currently are. When we're talking about Hanzo, he didn't go into the Scatter Arrow build. And it's actually washed up this time that gets the halftime show. By a big margin too. That's a 4,000 hit point difference that we have between the two teams here. But the earlier access for Granite Gaming onto the opponent's Immortal. And Thrall is topside now. He wants the experience for level 10. They want heroics. They're soon gonna get them, but we've seen Hanzo rotate to the bottom of the map to accomplish the same goal. The poke of the mages, still powerful here. Lauba also chipping in slowly and steadily as well. We need to be careful with those stun circles, and especially with the damage through Sergeant Hammer. Level 10 abilities are in, and the nano boost is obviously a big threat right now. Poke everywhere. Once again, the BFG for Hazorp, standard talent for him in pretty much every single game when he plays the hero. Here comes the arrow, and the BFG wrecks through them. Everybody low, but nobody down. Yeah, and Earthquake got committed too as well, so they were trying to lock down Mena, but they can't. Hanzo is jumping out of this, and the fight is shifting. More so over towards the Immortal of Granite Gaming, and it's starting to look a bit dicey for them. Washed Up is about to claim this one. Both of the camps have been eliminated. They're trying to go for the defensive position, but look at Fury. He's having mana problems already. The ult comes in, and he's clutching it. But we're having also the immediate follow-up with the bunker to save the rest of the team. Henning a bit low, trying to escape here. Henning! Oh, there's no connect, but he's still going to fall. Double kill for washed up. Two kills against zero, and they take the immortal. Uh-oh, not a good sign here for Granite Gaming. They lost two games in a row now, and it's starting to look problematic on the final map as well. Guys, it's becoming tricky here. And there's definitely nerfs that are playing a part in this now too. At this point, 
We're having Granite Gaming trying to set up the defense. Hazobs with Hammer is already pushing this in. There's the completion on the level one talent with the new habits. Pyromania now also with the unstoppable frames. Fantastic against the lockdowns that we're seeing from heroes like Garrosh. And they are moving through that forward with his big arrow. But Svamkora sees it coming, dodges it, the taunt and the kill. Ah, good move here. And they're trying to get another one set up too. They're going for Malfurion, but they can't quite take him down here. Was a good move by Liming though. Swam Grotta with a nice ult as we're trying to push Malfurion back. The fort is lost, but they get the kill. And they are taking the Immortal down before it can go onto the keep itself. Nicely done there. And a really a good reaction that we've seen there also from Li Ming. First of all, jumping out of the arrow's way and then able to turn it around with a kill against not only Blaze, but also nearly setting up a second one against Malfurion. That was worth a lot here. Ah, one kill against two. Li Ming is the one rotating towards the top side to deal with Mena. As he's starting to push the lane out. Both of the teams eager to get level 13. Ah, that's a good move. Look how close these, by the way, are. I mean, they barely get the camp just as we're seeing Tyrael move in. If he makes the jump onto the point, they're going to steal that away. But it's really clutch moments like this one that give them a small advantage in this. Damage output, 21,000 against 30k. Ah, the auto attacks of Hammer. Always a problem. But there is already a bit of a setup. They're trying to go for Chris again. Heroic abilities are all up on both sides. It's close. It's really close. The game is intense and Li Ming is still at the top side. One fort in this game has been eliminated already, but every other fort has now taken a fair amount of damage. But the Immortal is going to be announced soon. And then it comes back down to the question, how you deal with the Sergeant? How do you deal with Hammer? How do you deal with the Hazu Ops? 13 is in play. And there's the Immortal being announced. Immortal announced Hazorps at this point with the hyper cooling engines. We're seeing in addition to that also the Ninja Assassin. <laughs> the most redundant talent name that we have. He's a Ninja Assassin. Uh, it's pretty much the same word that you're using here. The double up actually on level 13 right now. Uh, also. Oh, oh, arrow connecting this time. There's the earthquake. They're trying to turn that around. And the bunker is getting dropped immediately by Chris. Fury is a bit low, but survives for now. And yep, that's already two cooldowns used on the side of Washed Up. Is that the advantage that Granite Gaming needs? Anna the entire time with the heals. Hanzo is still sitting at the bottom right of the map, dealing with the campus. We're having the aggression coming through towards the top right. They're trying to go for the defense first. But the problem is also that this camp is likely to take down the fort. Well, maybe not quite. Someone has to still poke away at it. Talking about poking away at things, they're poking over here. As we're now also having both of the teams focusing again on the Immortal and the Halftime Show is won once more by Washed Up. They take the Halftime Show, save the fort at the top, thanks to Ty, but now they have to fight for it. And again, it comes really down to the question, can you deal with Hammer? Granite Gaming needs to win a team fight. It's only two kills against one, but this, and it's even an experience. But it's really, it really seems like it's always Washed Up posing the threat here. And Granite Gaming, as the Hammer sieges forward, is the one that has to yield slowly and steadily and then loses out on the objective. Despite the fact that it's incredibly close, it feels like the onus is on Granite Gaming to make a play here. And Washed Up is happy to play this slow. They're putting Hammer into a good position again. They have Chris next to him. They have Nick next to him. Sanctifications are ready. Bunkers are ready. And the Immortal is slowly falling. It is a slow game that Washed Up plays. But it is an effective one. And that is what you would expect from the Germans. The German efficiency right here. The German-French connection of Washed Up looking strong so far. And Granite Gaming is looking for the kills. They're looking for the kills, they're looking for the opportunity, but they're starting to lose the hit points on the objective itself and get pressured back once more. And this time, if they lose it, it's going to be a big immortal. Look at those shields, 18,000. That's what we're looking at right now. Slowly washed up is moving back from his. Flank attempts always set up here, but all of them scouted out. Hanzo with the vision that he provides the entire time. And the poke is now finally happening on the right side of the map as Granite Gaming has edged out a bit of a position close enough so that they can shell away with Liming and with Ophia against the objective. But they can't do enough damage. They're trying to come in from the side. Fury has his ult up again. All of the rogue abilities are ready. Fury trying to move in every time into the range of Hammer. Just imagine what's going to happen once Hammer has 16 for the giant killer. 
it's going to become even worse. The taunt! Oh, and the sacrifice is ruining the place. And the turnaround against Fury drops Thrall. Thrall is dead. Lauba is in trouble. Banana H with the ult. And Lauba is going to fall eventually. They're going to start chasing him down right now. He's trying to buy time for his team. The Immortal has also been destroyed. And now we're looking at four kills against one. 15 against 14. The lead and a 50% Immortal moving through the top lane. And that fort is not going to give any resistance. None whatsoever. It's going to be down by the time that the Immortal arrives there. Hazo is already sieging up in the position and once they have level 16, which they should grab right now with that wave, we're also going to see the giant killer in play. And it is absolutely murderous what's happening here. Washed Up has won two games in a row. They were down 0-2 in this series. And they are aiming for victory on Battlefield of Eternity. They have the level 16 talents. There's the Giant Killer. And that's pretty much a lights out move right there. Granite Gaming holding on for dear life. Trying to somehow save the keep, save the core. But things are starting to become tricky here. They need a big play, and the question is who's going to be able to pull it off. They need a nano boost. Maybe they can go again. Oh, the arrow comes in, and the BFG takes down Leeming. What a setup. The synergy is there, and the momentum is in their hands, as Washed Up is going for another big tournament victory. The bunker on the ground, Granite Gaming on the run. The shields are down once more. Lauba falls, Garrosh eliminated. Only three survive, and that immortal is wrecked the core as washed up comes in takes the game takes three wins in a row and they claim themselves the champions in the heroes high premier series gg and well played as washed up takes the win